Welcome back. This is part two of our discussion on book gals. Once again, I am joined by Dr. Leah Leach and Bonnie Fillenworth. Welcome to Gal's Guide to the Galaxy. Your host, Lisa Leo, leads a roundtable in the universe to discuss women in music, literature, science, and more. Warning, time travel is possible. Well, and that's why it's time for our time travel gal. And it's Zelda Fitzgerald. Yay! She is an author and the flapper girl. Yes. I mean, she is the epitome of the 20s. 1920s, folks. (laughs) Gotta gotta be specific because we're almost on the next... Almost there. Oh my gosh. That means it's been a hundred years since the jazz age. Wow. Cool. That's so creepy to think about that. I know seeing how <laughs> that I way. still <laughs> listen to the jazz age music like all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so for for those of you who don't know who Zelda is, which I'm sure most of you probably do, here's a little backstory. She was born in 1900, which I get a kick out of that. It's a nice, even mm-hmm. number. Brought in the 1900. century. 1900. Yes. Yeah. Uh, She was born in Alabama, and she was born into a life of privilege. Her father was a Supreme Court judge of Alabama, and as a teenager, she was a dancer and a socialite. She was the classic image of the flapper girl of the 20s. She drank, she smoked, she pushed gender norms, and she was risque. And she met F. Scott Fitzgerald at a country club dance. He proposed, and she said no, That's right. as a as any modern flapper girl would. <laughs> right? Exactly. That's my girl. <laughs> now, F. Scott didn't have any social standing. He was not in the same realm as Zelda. But she did come around when he got his first book deal. And the book was a hit, and both of them became famous. F. Scott was known as the chronicler of the jazz age, and Zelda was an icon of the 20s liberated woman. They were essentially a power couple, Mm -hmm. probably one of the first power couples. Yep, probably. He wrote The Great Gatsby, and Zelda took up ballet. She was even invited to dance with the Royal Ballet of Italy, but she said no because she was writing short stories for magazines and painting. Now, at this point, People will say Zelda was F. Scott's muse. However, he would actually steal verbatim from her diary and put them in his novels. Bastard. Now, sh- yeah, <laughs> and and Zel- Zelda is not a damsel in distress. She didn't right. like this. Mm-hmm. They fought. They drank. They fought some more. She didn't put up with it. They were also bad with money. They traveled and they lived a high society lifestyle from their time and they ended up in ruins after the stock market crash of 1929. So their, their marriage was very rocky to say the least. Now Zelda was diagnosed with schizophrenia and spent time in mental health clinics. While she was in a clinic, she wrote save me the waltz in 1932. The book was semi autobiographical about painters with a troubled marriage. Sounds familiar. Mm hmm. Supposedly, F. Scott was going to use that material, too, for his next novel, but she beat him to it. (laughs) And he then, of course, blamed her medical bills on his lack of being able to finish his own work. Probably not not that he wasn't (laughs) able to write it himself, but, you know. Uh Uh-huh. The material was already out there. Uh (laughs) Uh-huh. Yes. (laughs) Now, things certainly didn't end well, and rather sadly, in 1936, she checked into Highland Hospital, and she started work on her next book. He moved to Hollywood. He struggled with alcoholism, and he died in 1940. She ended up dying eight years later when the hospital caught fire, and she never finished her second book. Yeah. Tragic. I will say, on a lighter note... The game Legend of Zelda is named after her. Yes. And the song Witchy Woman by the Eagles was inspired by her. <laughs> yeah. So even if you don't know Zelda, you know Zelda. <laughs> yep. <laughs> exactly. By the game, by the song, by the Legend exactly. of Z, you know it. <laughs> yep. Yep. And that's why I threw that little bit in there at the end, because it's, it's certainly not to make light of what a sad ending they both had. But just that that name is is rather famous, whether you realize it or not. 
Everyone right. knows Zelda to an extent. Mm-hmm. And it comes from yeah. her. She is, yeah. <laughs> yeah. She is yeah. the reason why we know of that name. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, since we're all quite familiar with her, is there any new facts or research that, that you learned from her through this? Bonnie? I didn't know about Witchy Woman. I knew oh, about Zelda, but wow. I did not know about uh, Witchy Woman. Witchy Woman. Um, the History Chicks, I think it is, it has a really good, it might even be a two-parter podcast. Oh, over. okay. Cool. And yeah, I, I I knew a lot. I don't know that much about um, her husband. I know it's like, it's a very, like, you are one team or the other <laughs> and they butt heads just like right. they did, you know, um, I haven't read any of her stuff though but i've read the great gatsby right so i don't know i feel biased because i haven't read his his side of the story but i i'm definitely team zelda right exactly yeah (laughs) yeah for sure how about you Leah? Uh, um i i wrote uh i did the research and wrote up the story however when i put it up i wanted to add a second picture to it and so there are two pictures in it. There's one, which is the quintessential, you know, flapper girl picture. The other one is of Zelda holding her cat. And I swear she is the spitting image of uh, one of the guests from this show, Rebecca Burfanger. She looks <gasps> she just is. like Rebecca in that photo. <laughs> I found this photo before Halloween and I sent it to Rebecca and I'm like, honey, I have found your Halloween costume. It is Zelda. She said, I'm on it. <laughs> So, yes, yeah, so that is what I learned new that uh, Zelda very much looked like and looks like Rebecca, especially when she's and, holding a cat. <laughs> and do you know something else that's really cool about that? I just realized what? Um, when I interviewed Rebecca for the roller derby interview, yes. I believe she had said that her roller derby name was Zelda Hits <gasps> Gerald. Oh, <gasps> then she knew. <laughs> uh, like, but I wonder if she'd ever seen this awesome photo. How awesome is that? Yes. Oh, oh that's totally. so cool. I just, for some reason, just looking, there's lots of different pictures of Zelda, but this particular one, do, do you see it? Yeah, she's yeah. Got, she's got Rebecca's eyes, mm-hmm. and I'm like, girl. That's so cool. <laughs> that yep. is so cool. I know. So forever, yeah. I will entwine them together as well. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I I will say um, I did know a lot of this already, and a lot of it was also highlighted in there was an Amazon Prime TV series that had come out I called Z, that. The Beginning of Everything. Mm, it was very um, good. Christina Ricci. It, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of this was covered in that. I don't think the show was renewed for a second season. It so wasn't. it 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 kind of ended in an awkward place where we really didn't get to see more of the you know, the, the development of, of F Scott's success and all that. So we, right. we didn't quite get to dive too deep into it, but um, I, I think for the most part, I just, I just love that she has always been true to herself. Like she was, mm-hmm. she was an outspoken socialite before she even met him. And even when she was married to him, she was never tied down to being this submissive, like housewife. Right. In, she was in, still in a, Zelda. In a time, yeah. yeah in, in a time period when there was nothing else to be. Mm-hmm. And I, I love that about her. Um, mm-hmm. So this kind of leads me into my next question. Like if you could go back in time, like in the heyday of the partying and the socialite, like, you know, the glamour of the twenties, how would you want to spend a day with Zelda? Dun, dun, dun. Hmm. I know I want to know more about the 20s. I mean, really what I want to know specifically is the 20s liberated woman. What was crazy? What was taboo then? You know what I mean? Like, what was the line and how clear was that line? Um, Because there's part of me that's like just being yourself, just speaking up when you disagree you know what I mean? That's liberating. Yeah. That's crazy talk. You know what I mean? There is a big part of me that almost wonders um, with her mental hospital, was that other people saying because she was outspoken that she was crazy mm. when really she wasn't? Like Ooh. people didn't know how to deal with it. So they labeled it as crazy. Hysteria. Right. Exactly. Oh, the hysteria. Oh, yeah. crazy. <laughs> yeah. And also just to get away. I mean, like if he was a douche canoe, maybe she was just trying to get away from him. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, I'm just saying there wasn't many ways for her to get away and she wasn't going to go back to her dad. So <laughs> hashtag douche canoe. Oh, <laughs> love that. F Scott Fitzgerald can suck it. Sorry. I don't like him. <laughs> 
I read too many of his books. I have paid my dues. I've just never heard that one. And oh, you haven't heard Dish Canoe? Oh, oh, that's my favorite one. I, I will forever use that now because I am I just love it. Thank Hashtag you, Hashtag Douche Canoe. You're, is that on our Thank bingo you. now? Because I, I can keep you. bringing that one up for our bingo card. <laughs> Absolutely. That that it's the gift you've provided for the entire podcast. So thank you. You are welcome. <laughs> Watson and Crick double douche canoe. Correct. Double douche canoe. <laughs> oh God. So good. Perfect. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but that's what I would like to know. <laughs> no. <laughs> if I nope. could turn back time. Wait, no, now it's a share nope. reference. Now now it's different. Mm. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Bonnie, what about you? Okay, so here's the plan. Yes. Oh, you have a plan. <gasps> Is it a three part plan? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're going to get the TARDIS. And we're going to go and we're going to pick up, I can't remember her name, but the lady who invented the bra. Yes. And have her meet Jacobs. Zelda Fitzgerald. Okay. Because they they seem like the same person. They kind of do. Mary like, Phelps Jacob. Why do I remember her oh. name? <laughs> like she she named, they wanted to name the kid, but I think they ended up naming the dog Clitoris. Oh. And then they were telling the kid that it was a Greek god. <laughs> like these ladies, like I really want to know if they ever met. That would be I cool. Can, oh. You would think they would because, I mean, her patent... I'm trying to think of, like, timelines. I would have to look it up. It's, like, around the same time. It is around the same time and it's both East Coast and then at the same time, uh, Zelda traveled a lot. Yeah, and they're, like, fancy party ladies. Exactly. Like, I, I like this idea. If not, there needs to be a drunk uh, history where we just pretend there is. The, <laughs> well, the, the bra lady is on drunk history. Yes. Yes. Did they ever do a Zelda drunk history? I don't... Th- I don't Lisa, do you watch drunk history? Oh, I, I, I've, I've watched... A, I've yeah, I've watched a couple of them, but I am not sure. I have to go back and look now. I know. I don't think mm. they did. I think because probably the Amazon show kind of, like, they they will go back and forth on the ladies we haven't really heard about yeah. before. And stuff, they did but... Nellie Bly twice. Yeah, they did. Well, Nellie Bly, yeah. come on. <laughs> girl lived a lot of lives. <laughs> See Derek Waters dressed up in a flapper girl dress? Yes. <laughs> Done. <laughs> He is not a douche canoe. There you go. (laughs) I like him. Nice. (laughs) That is interesting. Hmm. Lisa, what about you? What would you do? Well, I... So I would love to see if the parties were really as crazy as they were depicted on the TV series. Right. Um, You know, with her coming out just like full frontal, just completely naked and just, you know partying it up completely drunk almost getting kicked out of hotels like i would love to know if that was really happening but right. more than that wouldn't it be cool to be like a time traveling superhero where you could go back and then get all of her words published yeah before f scott could use any of them <gasps> yes. and then just tell him to suck it i like this <laughs> alternate reality Yes, <laughs> and and Zelda would be the famous one, and Correct. who knows, the Great Gatsby might not even be a thing. But eh, thank you, you know, no, we that could would, have something better. That would be fine. I hate that book. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> as do most high schoolers. I know. I don't even know why we. I didn't even have to read it in high school. I read it in mm. a book club, and then all I spent oh. the entire book club like bitching and moaning about reading this book. <laughs> I was terrible. <laughs> but then we saw the Leonardo DiCaprio <laughs> movie and I went, yeah, this isn't any better. Oh, the source material sucks. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. That would do it. <laughs> yeah. All right. I like so, everybody's plan. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's good. I think that's good. Um. So since we're kind of on the subject of the douche canoe. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I and I I'm assuming we're already kind of biased in this so I don't even know if I should bother asking this but do you think that F Scott would have been as successful had he never met Zelda should we do it in unison well I mean you guys might be really surprised by my answer though ah uh-uh. no it's no it's absolutely no. Not. <laughs> it's just trying to add a little intrigue there for a second 
No, I, I know. Finger. I don't think. I, yeah, no, seriously. I think I knew you just said, ready? On the count of three. One, two, three. No. Uh, no. no. <laughs> oh, I liked the, oh, no. Uh, no. Sorry. Mm-mm. I missed that part. Oh, uh, no. Oh, uh, uh, no. no. Bye, Felicia. Um, yeah, no. <laughs> you know what? Because even if you, if you look at pictures of the two of them, I'm sorry. She's the attractive one. Okay. <laughs> so of this celebrity couple thing. Yeah, no, no. People are far more interested in Zelda than they ever were for him. Uh, mm-hmm. his, oh God, his awkward story structure, like that's the part that actually bothers me. The flashback, the forward, the day linear, the leaving a scene, a moment in the middle of it when it's just getting interesting to then, meanwhile, <laughs> it's like, <laughs> yes. screw you. Like he can't actually, so there's great moments and I feel like those great moments were probably from Zelda's journal and diary, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, because his pacing and flow is jarring and sucks. So, um, so yeah, Team Zelda. Hashtag <laughs> <laughs> dish canoe. <laughs> <laughs> End of F. Scott Fitzgerald round two. <laughs> Bonnie, do you have anything to add? <laughs> <laughs> do it rant go for it uh, highly recommend it i feel so yes. much better <laughs> uh, should they because i can't i feel bad i can't like did she she published books right like she has the uh, save the waltz mm-hmm. okay yep i feel they need to remove gatsby from high school reading list and add her karmic fairness boom yes yeah there you yeah. go i like it mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. replace his yeah, words I'm... with hers <laughs> Yeah, I'm just going to go in agreement and say, yeah, that's perfect. That's that's appropriate karma. Yep. See, we solved the world <laughs> right now. <laughs> <laughs> High schoolers around the world rejoicing. <laughs> now, conversely, I'm just thinking about this. Conversely, could we say that he held Zelda back? I mean, because she, she was a very independent, outspoken woman, but I mean we're feeling like she could have done better. So do we think that he, he stifled some of her creativity, some of her success? I don't know. Chances at it. I'm really torn between, was it him or was it the patriarchy? Was it society in general? Yeah. I mean, he's part of a system, you know what I mean? And he's, yep. Yeah. So yes and no is where I'd kind of go at there. I mean, I don't think the world was ready for Zelda either. (laughs) No, no. No, not at all. No, there, there's definitely no right or wrong here. It's just something that I was kind of pondering. and It's a good point, like, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it just kind of makes you think. Cause, I don't think brother you know, was helping the situation. Can yeah, we go there? yeah, to figure out if like yeah. he actually added anything. Right. Yeah. Or if he just kind of made Zelda less Zelda. Made her more, mm-hmm. you know right. what I mean, fit into the box of societal norms. But be outrageous enough for me to write about you slash steal from you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah yeah Hmm. interesting it it is yeah it's definitely something to think about it's it's interesting and i think this actually is a perfect transition into our deep space exploration Um, we need like music for this we really do i know we need to find some good sound effects (laughs) (laughs) yes exactly oh (laughs) yes all the pew pews (laughs) so kind of in the same field where we've been talking right now, I found this article on NPR.org, and it was written by Cecilia Mazinek. And I apologize if I got your last name wrong, Cecilia. Um, and it's called Hashtag Thanks for Typing, and it spotlights unnamed women in literary acknowledgments. So a, here's a little bit of a brief snippet of what the article says. They're called, in quotes, my wife. And it seems they've done it all, typed, transcribed, and even researched from their scholar husbands. And through a hashtag started by Bruce Holsinger, who is an English professor at the University of Virginia, a conversation was started about the uncredited female labor in academia. Hashtag thanks for typing began making its mark with screenshots of the acknowledgement pages of books. These thank yous were posted to Twitter with a little added snark. (laughs) I put the kind of slightly sarcastic hashtag thanks for typing along with a maybe cynical comment or two about women being anonymous or unrecognized or, you know, unnamed in their husband's work, he Mm -hmm. says. 
A number of the responses that came in talked about the politics of academic labor and writing, the role of women as collaborators, often even unacknowledged co-authors of academic work, he says. The article goes on to say this conversation is not about blaming men, but about reminding people that there is still equity work left to do. It's just worth asking these questions and maybe being a little more active in our thank yous to people that do a wide range of underappreciated work that helps us do our jobs. Wow. Yeah, I love it. (laughs) Now, I, I'm, I know that this article is speaking very specifically about academic writing, um, but I think this applies to all forms of writing, fiction, nonfiction, oh, yeah. you know, whatever you want to say. And I, I just really like that this was a very uh, concise way of just kind of throwing it all together with a nice, neat little hashtag. And, <laughs> you know, hashtags have been a big part of a lot of women's movements these days. Yeah. And um, awareness, too. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I will mention this article is actually from last year. It was written in 2017. Um, I, I just happened to catch it upon doing some research. So I'm curious, were either of you familiar with this one? Have I had you heard of it. No. Totally new to both of us. Yeah, no, never cool. heard of it. Yeah, cool. good one. Yeah. So what was your reaction to this article? Oh, (laughs) I got into a rant about this before we started. Um, So I didn't I didn't see like a year for any of these books or publishings or whatever. Right. But Mm -hmm. I'm just going to assume that this is back in the day when women were the housewives. So they're not only doing the cooking, the cleaning, the child rearing, the grocery shopping, all that now we got to help you with your damn papers, too, mm-hmm. and type them up. <laughs> what the hell are these dudes doing? Right. Like, yeah. Oh, exactly. Mm-hmm. Good. Hashtag, another thing. Hashtag douche canoe. <laughs> ah, there it is. <laughs> See? It works for so many things. <laughs> oh, my God. I really, I shouldn't have been surprised by it, but I actually was. Uh, it was one of those things where, cause I was just seeing it one after another, you know, I would like to thank my wife. They don't have mm-hmm. names. It's just my wife, wife. my wife, my wife. Yeah. As I look at one that says my wife, Valerie. Oh, thank goodness. There was one of them who acknowledged his wife had a name. Uh, it's like back to the Bechdel test <laughs> yeah, again. Almost. They don't my pass God. the Bechdel test. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, it's just, uh, it's over and over again. And then when it got to, um, Sophia, who was, uh, Leo Tolstoy's wife, who typed up seven versions of war and peace. Oh, that is when my head exploded and I went, what? (laughs) Cause that is a huge manuscript. I mean, that's, that's a lot of unpaid labor. Um, and yeah, no, no, my head exploded. (laughs) It hurts to think about it. (laughs) It really did. And I felt, well, I mean, I felt bad for these women, but at the same time, I'm sure they're like, but I'm supporting my husband because, Mm -hmm. you know, if his, uh, academic paper does well, or if this book does well, then we'll have money and provide for the family. And it's like, I'm taking part at a job as well. Sure. You Mm -hmm. could go through all that, but at the same time, like Bonnie's saying, It's another thing to add to your day (laughs) that you're not getting paid for. You're not going to get appreciated for. Your husband Mm -hmm. can't remember your name. I mean, thanks. (laughs) (laughs) But also, I mean, flipping the script a little bit, when uh, I would be writing in my office, uh, nobody else was typing for me. (laughs) Nobody else would offer to type for me. Like, if you Mm -hmm. reverse the gender, uh, I don't see it happening. I don't really like, oh, let me make sure I take the kids out of here so you can have concentrate. No, (laughs) that's only when I specifically ask for time to get work done. (laughs) So interesting. So interesting. Yep. Yep. Did your head explode when you found all this? Well, I, I, I was shocked that I hadn't heard about this hashtag because Like I said, this article has been out for a while now. And I was like, how did I miss this? Right. I I don't know. Um, But I think more than anything, it got me thinking about this article really only scratches the surface. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's just the tip of the iceberg because they're merely talking about women 
doing the technical part of the work. They didn't even bother diving into women like Zelda, who we don't know what of their own talent was stolen. Right. Mm -hmm. And there's probably a lot of these women who were doing the typing and the transcribing and the research and maybe also had their own words stolen from them. And Mm -hmm. uh, I, I was, I was very appreciative that it was a man who started this, Mm -hmm. this trend. I think that that was a really refreshing thing to see that it was a guy starting a positive movement on our behalf going this is Um, not okay yeah yeah and I I think that was an important thing and I think it was also nice that in the article I believe it was um a woman who had said we're not blaming men this isn't a like man hating thing but this is just basic common sense folks like you're taking advantage of people whether it was in the past I'm sure that stuff is still happening now I mean Right. You know, we're we're still mm-hmm. we're still kind of behind on the common sense of doing things the right way, the equitable way. Um mm-hmm. and I I couldn't believe how abundant <laughs> these acknowledgments were. The fact that people just started going, "Okay, I'll add I'll add the one that I found. Here's another one I found." And it's just like it keeps going. This is mm-hmm. it, yeah. it, it's 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 more than a trend, it's an epidemic basically. Right. Um, and it is very, very hard work. And it's hard to imagine that someone can't even just use their wife's name. <laughs> it's like the bare minimum. My wife. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> Thank you, Borat. <laughs> That's all I could think the whole time I was reading it is like, they're all saying it in the mm-hmm. Borat voice. Right. Like, why? Why? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and it, yeah. I was wondering if uh, any of the ladies ever got ticked off with their husbands and like stuck something in there <laughs> as revenge. <laughs> and I'm a giant douche kidding. Yeah. <laughs> and they, they didn't bother to proof it or anything. Yeah, they were just like, yep, not. that's good. She did the work. Yep. <laughs> exactly. I'm a giant douche canoe. <laughs> Nobody will read this. <laughs> Awesome. I make my wife do all the typing. <laughs> oh my god! Type, and eat, type, 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 type. <laughs> oh man, tonight's been like stand-up night too. <laughs> Books and stand-up, exactly. And the article had Margaret Hamilton in there. It did. So amazing. Oh, and her yes. giant. Do you think she typed all that code herself? Oh, <laughs> she led the team of typing all the code. Exactly. It's funny Uh, because this actually makes me think of just in women's lives in general, like when you hear about women who are trying to have it all and mm -hmm. they're like trying to be a career mom, you know, so they're, they're going to a job, they're working full time, they're coming home and then, oh yeah, I still have to do everything in the house, right? Right. I still have to cook. I still have to grocery shop. I still have to pick up the kids. I still have to clean the house, blah, 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 blah. Like there's no, like you have your first full time job and then your second full time job. Right. And there's no time off of that. Whereas for, you know, for the most part, men have always had the, well, I'm done with my job. Right. I'm home now. Exactly. This is my this is my off hours. You know, that I must will go be in nice. the study <laughs> with my with my pipe and my robe and my slippers and read the paper. You know, well, like whatever. I, I you know, I have um, never known what off time is. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like <laughs> right. that must be cool, <laughs> right? <laughs> but then again, I will say that you know my husband doesn't either because he didn't prescribe to that either. Where it's yeah. kind of like I'm home, so now it's you know what does the house need? What does the kids need? What do all these freaking animals need like you know what i mean so yep but man but my dad had it so yeah yeah and and see and i i think that i've i've watched my mom live that that way where there's she's never not working until she's like falling asleep exhausted Mm -hmm. so i've been able to watch something that i have an appreciation that i don't have to have that right because I, i i have the same thing i have a husband who gets it and who is supportive and who is a teammate, you know, and, yes, and exactly. works with me and pitches in 50 50. So you can, when you can see both sides of it, you can have more of an appreciation for uh, not having to have that struggle. Right. You know, it's something to be thankful for. But, you know, I, I hope that we can get to the point where it's not something that we have to be 
you know, thankful for. Maybe we can just start taking it for granted because it's just the right. way things are. But, you exactly. know, I think I we think have a long way to go. Awareness <laughs> is the first step, too. So mm, yeah. that's why even silly things like a hashtag douche canoe. Uh, no, I'm saying yep. uh, thanks for typing. <laughs> um, it really does help because it's just like, oh, OK. And then, yeah. Uh, and then you kind of can see a different point of view. I think of it as a filter, you know, like a filter yeah. has mm-hmm. come off and be like, okay, now I'm seeing how that's a little bit more foggy mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. than it was before, but it's all changeable if you're aware of it. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, I like that, you know, what these hashtags are doing, I think are, they're a very gentle way of bringing awareness to something. Yeah. It's not, we're not shoving this down people's throats, you know, and, and, you know, ignorant people like to get insulted. Like, Oh, you're trying to make me think that you're trying to change my mind, whatever. Then well, don't click on a, the feed of the hashtag. Right. Right. <laughs> just it's, ignore this it is and move a, on. <laughs> this is a very nice way of just going, Hey, look over here. Mm-hmm. Um, you should know that this is an issue. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And I I think that was, that's what's so nice about this hashtag, but also kind of makes me sad because once again, I didn't even know it was a thing until Mm -hmm. I had to go out and intentionally research this issue of women having their own words stolen. Um, And it also brought up the fact that it's becoming a more well-known thing because we also have Mm -hmm. a movie coming out uh, with Kira Knightley called Colette. <gasps> yes. Oh. And it's all about the story of Colette. Now her last name is totally, I'm drawing a blank on her last name. Um, I don't but it, it's, know it's a Colette, similar baby. situation. It's, you know, oh, she's the muse. The husband takes the work. You know, it, it's that whole uh. issue that has constantly been a problem. Obviously, it's been more of an epidemic than we've realized for a very long time. So I think it's kind of exciting to see that this hashtag started. There's a movie coming out with a very similar similar story. Mm -hmm. So I think it's important that this is starting to become, it's getting more attention. And that's like, like you're saying, awareness is the first step. Mm -hmm. That's what this is. And and yeah, that's a great thing. Yeah. Yeah. Cause we can, it's uh, rewrite our history. To a certain extent, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's just like, no, new information is coming to light. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And so now we can see history a little bit differently. (laughs) Yeah. I love it. (laughs) Exactly. Yep. Well, I can't believe it's almost time to wrap up. And as we're getting to the end, I wanted to include a gal's guide article on 20 motivational writing quotes from female authors. And There was some beautiful quotes in here. And I found that a lot of these were focused on the struggles of the writing process. Mm -hmm. And each woman, each woman does a beautiful job of describing her own unique experience. And I think we can apply these quotes, whether it's in your regular mundane work or your creative outlets. So I'm curious if you found any of these quotes like a particular favorite or really motivating. How about you, Bonnie? Uh, I like the one at the beginning of the podcast was my favorite one. Ah, the Toni Morrison. From from Toni Morrison. Yeah. Yeah, that was a good one. I didn't like how several of them, I was like, well, you can replace writing with painting or art, especially about some of the ones like, you're going to do some crap first, but you just got (laughs) to keep going. Absolutely. (laughs) Yep. Get stuff on a canvas. Yeah. How about you, Leah? Oh, my favorite one. I love so many of them, but my favorite one, that one that kind of took my breath away went, oh, ooh, that's good. You know what I mean? Like sometimes you get yeah. that quote. It was uh, Natalie Goldberg's Writers Live Twice. I mean, it's the shortest ooh. one of the quotes and it's just yeah. three simple words, but it's very true because even if a writer is writing about a fictional, you know, happening, JK writing about Harry Potter, um, You know, she said that Hermione is based on her when she was little Um, and Dumbledore was one of her teachers. So it is living twice. But not only that, it's um, to write about some of the emotions and conflicts and things like that. You have to dig into that part of yourself and you live twice that way. And I'm just like, that is powerful. So that was my favorite one. That's beautiful. Yeah. 
Dun, I, like, dun, dun. I like I like your interpretation too. That's really nice. Thank you. Yeah, there's there's a couple in here that I really like. So I would like to read them for the listeners. Do it. Um. So the first one is you don't start out writing good stuff. You start out writing crap and thinking it's good stuff. And then gradually you get better at it. That's why I say one of the most valuable traits is persistence. And that was Octa- Octavia E. Butler. Who's a fantastic sci-fi writer, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, she's I good. Just, I just like the bluntness of that one. Just, you know, mm-hmm. it's cr- it's crap. It is. <laughs> Get over it. Yeah. <laughs> Keep exactly. doing it. Yeah. <laughs> it gets better. <laughs> yeah. Uh, another one, and this is it. Uh, another very short one, is writing is a delicious agony Mm -hmm. and that was Gwendolyn Brooks (laughs) my friend uh Sarah Gott Helton she used to always joke around whenever we were struggling with writing she's like writing is a cruel mistress and we would say it (laughs) like we were Catherine Hepburn or something like that and we would just talk about how it's our mistress (laughs) and I think she was getting it from someone else too (laughs) I always remember hearing that um and I will probably get this wrong but the the best days for an author are the day you I think like the day you decide to write the book and the day you finish it or something like (laughs) that probably all the other days like suck (laughs) like everything in between is just horrendous but the best day for an author is like the day the day they finish the book like you know something along the lines of that the idea forms you're like this is the best thing I'm going to ever write and then the day (laughs) I am finally done with this piece of crap (laughs) yeah (laughs) those two days are good (laughs) yeah exactly it's a lot like that joke about boat owners like the best day in a boat owner's life is the day they buy it and then the day they sell it absolutely (laughs) everything in between is pure hell so that's I was like wow that's just like authors that's really interesting (laughs) who knows maybe I should forget this writing thing and just buy a boat in the month of November. Maybe I should just do that. (laughs) Or a douche canoe. Douche canoe! (laughs) Hashtag douche canoe. If I get any size boat, I'm just naming it a douche canoe. Oh my gosh. (laughs) Surely there is a boat somewhere with douche canoe. If not, Photoshop's a thing. Oh, that's going to happen. Oh my gosh. Uh, My cheeks hurt. I haven't made the graphics for this episode yet. Uh, uh, uh. Uh Uh-oh. Dun, Trouble dun, dun, dun. is a brewing. People thought Bodie McBoat face. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Oh my gosh. We are off the rails. Sorry. I love it. it no, Lisa's I love face it. Hurt. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. My cheeks are hurting. But I'm you, laughing too much. You had more inspirational quotes. I'm sorry. Inspirational. <laughs> All right. I have just just a couple more. I just I just thought these were worth were worth saying out loud because they sounded great. Yes. Okay. So the next one is Writing is always a process of discovery. I never know the end or even the events on the next page until they happen. There's a constant interplay between the imagining and shaping of the story. Kim Edwards. I do love that. Discovery. Yeah, I thought that was like such a poetic way of putting it too. It's an adventure. Yeah, between the imagining and the shaping. I loved that. Exactly. She she makes writing sound very glamorous, in my opinion. See, probably because she's a writer. <laughs> yeah, she's, she's she's good at that. She's true. selling. She's it. the complete opposite of Gwendolyn Brooks, though, who's like, oh, it's agony. <laughs> exactly. This sucks. Don't do it. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> There's another one from Joan Didion that says, "I write entirely to find out what I'm thinking, what I'm looking at, what I see, and what it means, what I want, and what I fear." I I love Joan Didion. By the way, there's a Netflix um, documentary about her that I just watched. Mm. It's brand new. It's fantastic. I just wanted to write or I wanted to watch something about a writer. I thought maybe osmosis, it would help or something like that. Uh, Her life is absolutely fascinating and her process is very fascinating too. So I highly recommend that one. Is it just her her name? Yes, it's Netflix and just Joan Didion. Yeah, Mm. it's got a subtitle too. Is something like a writer on the edge it's not that but you know what I mean um but yeah it's her name is the documentary I like it when they do that because that's the best way I can tell somebody <laughs> there's yeah, a documentary no. about so and so and it's called yeah such no and abstract such. title <laughs> they're gonna forget right. one or the other or both 
<laughs> right. Well, good on Netflix because yes. they they had just added that Hedy Lamar mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. bio from last month, which was really cool for STEM month as well. So yeah. good on them for adding some good uh, bios on women. Yeah. Nice. I'm always looking. <laughs> uh, they yeah. have one. I watched one the other day on Eva Hess. Oh, uh, really? Oh, then I'll have to watch that one. Okay. Dun, dun, dun. I'm on it. <laughs> all right. Books and movies. Always. We have no free time left. It's all gone. It's all right. <laughs> we're just, we're soaking in the muses. Yes. <laughs> the yes. inspiration and the wisdom because we're saving the world one podcast at a time. <laughs> yep. Yep. Absolutely. <laughs> all right. I have one last quote for you and it's from Emily Dickinson. I know nothing in the world that has as much power as a word. Sometimes I write one and I look at it until it begins to shine. I love that. Mm. And I honestly think that one's about perception too, because it's that inner yeah. critic and going, you know what? No, this sentence is good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Oh, beautiful. Yep. <laughs> Goes back to Kim Edwards with the shaping, the shaping, the evolving of it. I love that. Yep. Yeah. Finding it. Aww. Oh yeah. Awesome. Yes. Yay. Mm. Yay for gal authors. Yes. They're <laughs> brilliant. All of them. Oh, yes. <laughs> you know what I thought of earlier is, okay, if JK is basing Hermione on herself, yeah. I assume most girls reading the books are going to identify as Hermione. Quite possibly. Or Luna Lovegood yeah. is yeah. the other one that yeah. a lot too. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's like, so are you identifying as JK Rowling? Like kind of. Right. Like for a little bit, you're J.K. Rowling? More than likely, yes. Ooh. And that would be a wonderful, wonderful uh, thing. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh, I dig it. Ooh. That that really, uh, that's a mind warp right there. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> They're getting their inspirational J.K. through a subjugate mm. character. <laughs> yes. It's like a spoonful that's of awesome. sugar. There we go. How about that? <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. I love it. I love it. All right. Well, thank you, ladies, so much for being here today. This was way too much fun. I think we have more fun than we should have. Sweet. (laughs) And we came up with some naughty new hashtags, too. Bingo game's going to be awesome. (laughs) Yep. Yep. Awesome. Keeps I mean, where else can a podcast provide Douche Canoe and... A league of their own yes. in the same yes. bingo card. You can't exactly. you can't get and that anywhere else, drink. folks. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yes. Lovely. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so on that note, Leah, why don't you tell the listeners where they can find you and what cool projects you're working on right now? Uh, you can find me on Twitter. I should really work on my Twitter. I should try to be more funny on my Twitter. I've just been lazy on my Twitter. But I am on Twitter <laughs> at Dr. Leah Leach. Um, and what I am working on, which probably is why I'm just sleep deprived and giddy is Thanksgiving weekend. Uh, gals guide is doing Ohura training Academy. And so we're doing awesome presentations. Bonnie is actually helping out too. So, uh, we are in charge of the family programming room and we are doing STEM education in the things that Ohura is awesome at and appreciates and loves. So communications, navigation, history, being confident, being awesome, being Ohura. So um, super excited for Thanksgiving weekend. Yay. That's awesome. Yes. And if people want more information on that, they can go to the Gals Guide site. Yes, go. It's on the homepage at galsguide.org. Look for the Ohura Training Academy and it'll have all the links and it'll have the full course guide as well. Excellent. Yes. All right. And Bonnie, how about you? When we get done, like, you just need to put hashtag douche canoe on Twitter. Like nothing else. Right. <laughs> just that. And people will be like, what does this what mean? That? Why is she suddenly being funny again? Or maybe it's inspiring. <gasps> you know what? Every dude on my Twitter will think it's about them. Oh. <laughs> oh. I will start to get phone calls and messages going, you okay? What's up? What's going on? <laughs> you mad at me? Did I do something? But I will. I will hashtag hey, douche canoe. Go I thought it. social media was only for cryptic messages. <laughs> no, that's Facebook. <laughs> oh, that's, that's Facebook. That's right. Vague booking. <laughs> Vague booking. <laughs> <laughs> Twitter's for the important sarcasm. <laughs> That's so true. Yes. So true. <laughs> I'm on it. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay, so my dear Bonnie, oh, where 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 can the listeners find you, and what cool projects are you working um, on? I'm all over the um, everywhere as Bonnie Fillenworth. It's F I L L E N W A R T H. And I'm everywhere. Um, <laughs> it needs to be like a song. You know what I mean? Like they do the Mickey Mouse, M-I-C-K. Like we need to make your last name a song. <laughs> <laughs> Which is it? <laughs> exactly. Um, I just did my uh, women's history calendar. It's still available. It makes wonderful holiday gifts. Yeah, it does. Um, yes. <laughs> um, I'm going to be at the Garfield Park Autumn Art Fair here in November 17th and 18th. Sweet. At Starbase. Yeah. And then I'll have the um, Stutz Holiday Open House will be that first Friday in December. So you can come to my ah. studio and see where all the magic happens. Also, uh, perfect for holiday gifts. Yes. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. Know what I mean? Yep. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes. We're not hinting. We're just going to be direct. Exactly. Modern women. We right. don't need to hint. Totally. And <laughs> I will also make sure the Gals Guide has a link to our Etsy shop. Just saying. In Woo! case you yes. are out of the Indianapolis area, Etsy's a thing. Holidays are a thing. <laughs> Excellent. Yes. I love it. Yes. Well, as for me, you can find me on Twitter at Geek Chic Lisa. And, um, you know, go check me out. I got some cat photos. Yeah, and you do. Some cupcake photos. I like to post a lot of my baking stuff. I like to post a lot of my cats getting into shenanigans and <laughs> shenanigans. um yeah yeah and uh that's about it i i gotta work on my twitter sarcasm yes um i retired my cryptic facebook okay so that's fair i don't really yeah that's okay yeah, i'm 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 on there but you know i don't really use it so I'm kind of over it exactly <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah twitter's it for me <laughs> and as far as that, we would love to hear from you listeners. Let us know your favorite gal authors and books using the hashtag BookGals. And for all the articles and podcast links discussed today, please visit galsguide.org. And until next time, thanks for listening. For more exploration, including show notes and links, visit galsguide.org. Add your voice to the discussion on Twitter at Gals Guide Galaxy. Support our mission by becoming one of our Patreon members. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe to Gals Guide to the Galaxy. Thank you for listening. Returning you to Earth in 3, 2, 1...